Welcome back, orangutan lovers, to Boss Foundation's fourth OUcast. I'm your host for today. My name's Andrea, and I'm here with Made, who's one of the veterinarians at Samboja Lestari Orangutan Rehabilitation Center in East Kalimantan. Welcome to the podcast, Made. Hello, Andrea. My name is Nimade Ayudita Arjani Lakshmi Medianti, but you can call me Made. I'm a veterinarian in Boss Foundation, Samboja Lestari Rehabilitation Center. Thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure to have you here. How are you doing on this uh, warm Indonesian day? I'm doing good here with um, my regular job as a vet. Could you tell me a little bit about what your role is in your job as a Boss Foundation veterinarian? As a veterinarian, um, overall, I do things that related to three R's. So those are rescue, rehab, and release of the orangutans. And um, our daily routine starts in the morning by the time we arrive at the clinic. Um, we prepare morning medications for our animals under treatment. And then after that, we do routine check to orangutans in the socialization cages, and then in the forest school, special care unit, and also babies and nursery. Uh, we also look after around 70 sun bears in our rehabilitation center. And if the technicians or babysitter inform that there is an animal that looks sick or shows abnormal signs, something like that, um, the vet will examine and give some treatment. Yeah, generally something like that in the big picture. So you and the other vets go in when a member of the animal care team notice an animal, a sun bear or orangutan, is sick or unwell. But you also mentioned that you do routine checks. What do these routine checks look like? What are you searching for? So in our routine check, we make sure that our animals are eating properly. And then they also show um, normal behavior and um, not looking sick something like that. And um, for our routine medication in the morning, um, including giving oral drugs and also nebulizing orangutans with respiratory problems. You mentioned a nebulizer. Could you tell me more about that, what it is and what the purpose is? So basically nebulizing is um, the way of treatment in which we deliver the medication in the form of gas directly to the patient respiratory system. So basically the um, the drugs are in liquid form and then through the nebulizer um, it evaporates and the gas are entering the patient's respiratory system. And the purpose is um, to relieve the clinical signs related to respiratory problems like difficulty of breathing. So by delivering the drugs, um, we can relieve their difficult breath. So yeah, it will ease the breathing. So Mada, you mentioned this nebulizer treatment as part of your daily routine. Um, mm -hmm. Are you treating a lot of orangutans with respiratory issues? Um, what sort of diseases and conditions do they have? Okay, so at the moment, we nebulize eight orangutans. So those are in individual cages, socialization cages, and also in special care units. In, they're in socialization cages. Does that mean their conditions are not con that they can live with other orangutans? Um, so actually, the orangutans that, that is in socialization cages are alone right now at the moment. Uh, so not very social socialization cages, you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so the orangutan is put in the cage alone. Yeah, so basically not so social, actually. <laughs> so, their conditions are contagious? Is that why you leave them alone? Um, so for now, it is not contagious, huh? as far as I know. Okay, what is this condition? Um, so the condition that needs to be treated with nebulizer are respiratory problems, including air facilities, pneumonia, and sinusitis. Okay, and you keep them separate from other orangutans? for precautionary sake then, um, mm -hmm. to ensure that it can't pass. Right. For all of these conditions, you mentioned there's no cure as of now. Have these orangutans been receiving these treatments for years, pretty much since they arrived to Boss Foundation? Um, since the disease is chronic, so um, we give them long-term treatment. Those poor orangutans, but I know they're in good hands with your team there. They're getting the best treatment possible. <laughs> 
so it's important that we treat these sick orangutans, but also keep our healthy orangutans healthy, essentially. So, Mada, you've told us a lot about what a typical day at Samboja Lestari looks like for the veterinary team. But I have to imagine, with a global pandemic at your doorstep, uh, your routine's changed. So how has COVID-19 impacted your lives there and your work? Um, during this pandemic, um, our team is divided into two separate teams with two different working shifts. So um, we do two days work and two days off. So we alternate the team so we won't meet with each other. So um, yeah, this is in purpose of minim minimize the contact and social distancing, something like that. And for veterinary team, since we are split into two, so each working shift, there are two vets that um, taking control of our routine in giving the medication. It is quite an effort actually when um, our workload remains the same, but we are decreasing number of people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is heavier actually, but yeah, yeah. we must keep going. Wow, thank you for taking on a bigger workload for the sake of keeping the orangutans, the sun bears, and the staff safe. We really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> and I imagine even beyond the rotating teams, there's even more you guys have to do with coronavirus. I know you guys are always, you know, clean and wearing masks as veterinarians, but is this taken to a whole new level? So um, we emphasize the importance of washing hands in every part of Cambodia study actually. So we put put on posters of how to wash our hands properly um, based on WHO guidelines. And we provide washing hand spots in each cages. And particularly in the clinic, every single time we are going to prepare medication or um, do the checks to our animals, we must wash our hands before putting on our PPE. Um, it reminds us to keep ourselves clean all the time. <laughs> that does sound like a lot of work, but important. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you for keeping this up for the sake of the orangutans. This personal protective equipment you use when seeing orangutans, what does this include? Because right now I'm imagining you in hamster balls walking around orangutan cages. <laughs> <laughs> So the personal protective equipment we use are including surgical masks and gloves and also our overalls. Overalls? Are these like, you know, uh, cute trendy overalls, coveralls? Oh, um, not like hazardous materials clothes, like astronaut things, not, no, just our um, field work clothes. Yeah, because it looks like overalls. <laughs> Okay, so you guys call them overalls. Good to know the uh, Samboja Lestari lingo there. <laughs> <laughs> and to clarify, have all these measures been working? Have any orangutans shown signs of contracting COVID-19 at Samboja Lestari? Um, for now, luckily, no, not yet, and we don't want that to happen. I'm happy um, to hear that. I'm happy yeah. to hear that your hard work is paying off. <laughs> It's, I don't think it's luckily, it's thanks to your guys' dedication. In general, whether it be during a time of a pandemic or just before all this happened, what do you see as the greatest challenge that you and your veterinary team are facing in terms of orangutan conservation and orangutan care? So our challenges here are the first thing, I think the, like, the geographical profile in Samboja is kind of hilly. So to reach some point or some cages in Samboja Lusari, it took quite a effort. So for example, if we are going to check orangutans in socialization cages, we have to take a walk like uphill, something like that. And also um, if we are going to forest school, we need about 20 minutes drive in a stony rough and sleepy road or something like that. So yeah, the geographical things can be shown for us. And also, um, since we share about 96% of our DNA to the orangutan, we are also at risk of 
transmission of the zoonotic diseases, for example, tuberculosis or hepatitis or malaria, helminthia, something like that. So um, to prevent that happen to us, we must do something called biosecurity. So we keep ourselves secure from the transmission of the disease. And the other thing is treating orang could be very tricky since um, they could be picky at some point. So we need to know what they like so we can give them proper treatment. To summarize, there's three challenges, like you're saying, at the mm-hmm. local scale, poor roads and t- topography at Samboja Lestari, keeping yeah. biosecurity yeah. tight so there's no zoonotic disease transmission, and then treating individual orangutans, knowing their personalities, likes and dislikes. Yeah. Why is that important yeah. for treating orangutans? Why do you have to know individual tastes and preferences? Is not knowing just about orangutans in general enough? Um, so we need to know their likes and dislikes in order to... It is related to the medication we are going to treat. So if we are going to give the drugs orally, we need to know the mixture that they like, whether they like fruit or they like with liquid or in syrup form. So yeah, it will be important for us to deliver the drugs properly to the patient. I see. So it's getting them to take the drugs. Who yeah. is the most picky orangutan you have seen at Samboja Lestari? Oh, well, there is an orangutan called Lisa. She is quite a challenge for us because she is kind of noticed if our mixture contains drugs. So when the mixture is given to her and then she takes it and if it tastes like something a little bit bitter, she will throw it right away. She kind of knows that, oh, there must be some drugs inside it. Let me separate the drugs and then eat, eat the rest. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like a challenge. Um, yeah, right. Her, what would you say her favorite food is? If, you're, if you are to give her drugs and for her to maybe eat it without throwing it away, what's the sneaky treat you give? Her favorite fruit is banana and dragon fruit so far and we try to mix the drugs with the fruit and we also add the uh, low calorie sugar to make it sweeter that is our current trial for now and hope she likes it because in the liquid form she already threw it away and with baby porridge mixture she doesn't want that either so yeah (laughs) wow an orangutan who doesn't think bananas and dragon fruit are sweet enough. She is, uh, <laughs> sounds like a character. <laughs> yeah. I hope most of the orangutans are more cooperative. If we were to step back and look at orangutan conservation on the whole, from your time in this field, has there been something you notice as the biggest struggle for organizations such as ours who are trying to protect orangutans in the wild and reintroduce wild populations? In terms of orangutan health, yeah, something about veterinary medicine, there are still a lot of more to discover, I think, since the one of the things that threaten this species is disease. So we need to keep them healthy and prevent and treat them from any diseases. But um, there are many things that still remain unknown about orangutan health and disease. So yeah, it is our challenge, particularly red challenge, to keep learning and if possible, discovering something new that will be beneficial for orangutan health. And that hopefully in, in the future, it will support their comeback to their habitat and for conservation. That does sound daunting. Yeah, it's hard to battle <laughs> what you don't know. For the diseases that you do know, what disease seems to be the most devastating for orangutans? The most devastating? Hmm. It is quite a tough question. <laughs> or how about top three? Top three. Well, um, in Samboja study, there are tuberculosis, but for the last few, few years, um, there is no relapse or new case, thankfully. And um, second is melioidosis, so bacterial infection that affects vital organs. And then the third one, um, yeah, I think I, I only can give those top two, the most fatal case in Cambodia. <laughs> those sound like enough of a challenge. I'm happy there's not a top three. 
<laughs> oh, one other thing I forgot that will complete the top three. So the third is um, chronic respiratory disease. Yeah, it is quite serious, um, especially in adult or Yeah, then that's oh the no. third. <laughs> it wasn't a third, but yeah, it's better to know what the issues are and tackle them head on. Yeah. yeah. What do you think the solution is for you and other vets? Is it just more research? Is it equipment? Is it manpower? How do we support you? Oh so, yeah, we are now currently hustling on solutions and one of them including research. So we are figuring out the best treatment for our animals to suffer from this disease. And also we need to like evaluate the management related to animal health, something like this. So for example, for orangutans that are survived from disease, we isolate them at special care unit cages, which is quite isolated, quite far from the other cages. So the purpose is to prevent further spread to the other orangutans. So research is important as well as uh, management. It sounds like an important combination. I do wish you all the best in yet yeah, perfecting this. I do know we have made some great strides. So thank yeah. you for your support and dedication. <laughs> Um, is there something that our supporters can do to help you and the other veterinarians at the Boss Foundation Centers? So the first thing is um, don't keep wild animals as a pet. This is a concern for transmission of the zoonotic diseases. So by not keeping them as pets, we will prevent their diseases to be transmitted to humans. Well, and the second part is in terms of orangutan conservation in more general way. If you know there's something like wild animal trafficking, um, you can import authorized personnel. So by doing this, you can help reaching the chain of wildlife trafficking as well as preventing the further transmission of the another species. And also, the last but not least, you can um, show your support to conservation by donating and support to Orangutan Education Center. Thank you for that insight, Made. They all sound like important things that people can do. And also, I imagine that would help prevent the next pandemic outbreak, not keeping wild animals as pets. Yeah, right. That's important. <laughs> I know you are super busy with the reduced number of veterinarians you have at the center, so I don't want to keep you much longer. Um, thank you for your time. But before we go, do you have any last takeaways for our dedicated supporters who are listening into this podcast? Okay, so I believe our act of conservation that is taken today will bear fruitful results in the future. And I hope that our efforts can bounce back these endangered species, particularly orangutans as well as hunters. It needs more people to contribute and involve in this part as well. One thing to remember is we human beings might often be considered a destroyer of nature balance, but we also are the last hope of restoring nature's harmony. I think that's awesome. Wow, I could not agree more. That gives me hope, Made. So with that, I want to... Thank you for your precious and valuable time giving it to us. Um, I want to let you go back to the orangutans. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep up the amazing work. Thank you, Made. Okay. It's a pleasure for me to be here and stay safe also, Andrea. And to all our supporters, if you enjoyed this, you can tune in again in the coming weeks for OUcast number five. Follow our social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook to see what the next theme will be. Talk again soon.